Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning into today's second video. We're going to have a look at weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 6th of March, and we'll be able to send out beyond that with the Exeter GFS and ECM ensembles. And maybe once around a couple of weeks, we'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets into the second half of March, and we'll bring you up to date with all the latest stratospheric developments. So please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content and thanks to everyone for doing that for gals weather viz thank you so much everyone um a bit sore be eyes again today so uh that's reason off camera hopefully that'll settle down soon right gonna start off with strat so latest uh, gfs temperature forecast for 10 hpa over the arctic of north pole uh, looks like this the blue colors have a cold temperature stratospheric polar vortex at their roots there over the uh, north pole so we've already, already got a slight warming occurring over southern europe and another warming will gather pace through russia in about a week or so's time and then that intensified dramatically in in the uh, first week of March, the most red colours turning up and started to penetrate into the North Pole as well. That temperature level is reaching SSW type temperature levels, displacement of end of the stratospheric polar vortex out into Canada, uh, North Atlantic, and into Northern Europe as well. Big one in the stratosphere. This does look like it could well be an SSW reversing the zone of wind at 10 HPA. And uh, that's how look when we get to the end of the GFS 6 run. So, do we split the vortex on this uh, update? Probably not. Most of the vortex remains intact, I think. Moves round into northern parts of Europe. So I reckon that would be a technical SSW. I think reaching the required temperature level to do that. A uh, reverse wind at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north. But a displacement event rather than a split of the uh, stratospheric polar vortex. Up to 12 March, of course, the vortex might split beyond that. Uh, but very dramatic warming of the here. Let's go through the GFS ensembles, see uh, whether they're in agreement for uh, that from the GFS operation run. So this is the GFS control run. Again, that's going for a dramatic warming of stratosphere there over Russia, bringing a displacement event of the uh, stratospheric polar vortex through the first week of March. Ensemble member number one. Again, big warming with a displacement event. Ensemble member number two. Also looks like it's producing SSW uh, with a displacement event. Ensemble member number three. <coughs> So, sorry, everyone, again, big warming stratosphere there, displacement event on some of member number four, also going for quite a dramatic warming on some of member number five, looking like that, a little bit less of warming with that one, so it's toned down, but still, displacement event on some member number six, again, displacement event on some member number seven, um, that uh, does produce quite a significant warming from Russia into the North Pole. I've had another warming. It looks like it started to gather to the south of the stratospheric polar vortex as well. Ensemble member number eight, looking like that. Dramatic warming, displacement event. Ensemble member number nine, again, dramatic warming, displacement event. Ensemble member number ten, with a significant warming and a displacement event. Ensemble member Number 11 with a, a significant warming and displacement event. Ensemble member number 12 again, displacement after significant warming. Ensemble member number 13 looks like that. And ensemble member number 14 also going for a big warming and displacement. Ensemble member number 15 is at it too. Ensemble member number 16. Uh, looking like that. Ensemble member number 17. <laughs> Looks like that. They're all going for it, aren't they? They're all going for a big warming over Russia, moving into the bowl and bringing a displacement event. Uh, ensemble member number... What are we up to? Number seven, number 18, sorry. Um, looks like that. So that looks like it could be about split the vortex as well. Dramatic warming. Ensemble member number 19. Uh, looking like that. Ensemble member number 20. Uh, that one also with a big warming, displacement event, ensemble member number 21. 
like that. Ensemble member number 22 going for it as well, I would assume. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, so they're all going for it. They're all going for a big, big warming through the first week of uh, March in the stratosphere with a displaced event. Not many of them, or none of them really splitting polar vortex. That one maybe does it. Uh, that was even stronger with the warming as well, and that one possibly does split the vortex. Um, would certainly reverse the zone of wind. That's on some member of 24. On some member of 25, looks like that. On some member number 26, looks like that. On some member number 27. Go straight as well. Ensemble member number 28. How's that one looking? Again, dramatic warming. And there's another warming getting going over Europe there by the end of it, 12th of March. Ensemble member number 29, penultimately, uh, is looking like that. Again, dramatic warming. That looks like it's about to split the vortex as well. And ensemble member 30, finally, looks like that. But I'm also going for a big warming there from uh, Siberia into the pole. So they're all going, all our summer members actually are going for a, a dramatic war in Stratosphere over Russia and Siberia through the first week of March, penetrating that into the North Pole, so probably uh, enough to uh, reverse the zone of wind at 10 HPA, 60 degrees off the technical SSW, all going for a displacement event of polar vortex. Not many of them going for a split type event at the moment. We shall keep monitoring though, interesting developments through the first week into the second week of March will keep you updated. Right, again, okay, let's have a look at uh, the latest uh, wind that from Earth North School .net. So, plenty of low pressure uh, between Scotland and Iceland, and we're bringing the wind from off the Atlantic. It's a calmer day today, but still, those westerlies are bringing showers. Centering temperature now reached 5 degrees, so we're sitting at a nice round 5.0, that's 1.2 degrees above the 61 to 99 average, and it's provisional to yesterday to the 23rd of February. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks looking at Milton Keynes today. The red line is a third year upper air temperature average for Milton Keynes. We're starting off a little bit above average today, but we're going to be going uh, below average actually for the next uh, few days, and then lifting the upper air temperatures up through the first week of March, becoming milder, possibly a cooling trend uh, later on into the second week of March. Precipitation-wise, not as unsettled as it has been, actually. So I've got some rainfall to come over the next two or three days in form of showery bursts. But then we could actually have a drier window opening up here through the opening days of March before possibly going up more and settled again later on towards the end of the first week of March. That, again, is a long way off. Temperature normally is uh, for the next five days, coming out, of, coming out around to a little bit above average, but slightly below for Ireland, the 6 to 10 day temperature anomaly is actually a little bit more above average and the 10 to 14 day temperature anomaly again a little bit above average so that's quite mild for the first uh, week 10 days of march precipitation anomalies for the next week coming out dry but now it's just a bit of a change we was expecting uh, a very wet spell through uh, through the first week of uh, march but maybe more in way of higher pressure which cfs have been consistently forecasting actually on the cfs weekly so it would seem more in way of high pressure so if the cfs got this right and all the other models have got it wrong um, in terms of the first week of March, not being overly unsettled, but it will be hats off to the CFS. We give the CFS a lot of stick, but sometimes it gets it right, and uh, this could be one of those occasions, actually, where high pressure turns out to be more influential through the first week of March than, um, you know, than we anticipated. So we'll see how that works out. Right, let's go through the chart days. Every South Asia UK met Euro run is uh, looking. So uh, we find that we're in a westerly flow on Thursday with low pressure clearing out into the North Sea, so up cool and showery. Then high pressure building up through the end of the week into the weekend. Uh, by the end of the UK met, gets us to midnight next Monday. We're back into the wet and windies. I can't again see that low pressure clearing out with high pressure building in behind it at the end of the week into the weekend. And then we're flat as a pancake, really, as we get through to the beginning of next week, high pressure south, low pressure door with a flat westerly flow. KMA, again, building up that ridge at the end of the week and into the first weekend of March. Then turning wetter, windier and cooler as we go towards the end of the first week of the month. The GFS midnight run, uh, once more with high pressure building up from the south at the end of the week into the weekend. Then we're flat and westerly into the start of next week. But high pressure, you see, is a little bit stronger, certainly for Ireland, England, Wales anyway. Still perhaps a bit showery, though, for Scotland. 
a rich keeps on uh, sticking around up to a day 10. And even beyond that, she's quite a bit of high pressure down in herself. So, reasonably dry for herself, more unsettled in the north, and should be mild. Perhaps very mild. Perhaps even quite warm. Uh, GFS 6Z, uh, again, showing high pressure uh, building to the south and low pressure to the north at the weekend. Into next week, again, high pressure builds up from herself. We've got dry weather there. But gradually slipping away by around day 10. And the GFS 6 that is more unsettled in the extent with uh, low pressure being plenty of uh, wind and rain in off the Atlantic. So the GFS 6 that eventually gets into a bit of an onslaught type pattern. Right, well, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let's know what you think about this and all our videos and content. Don't forget to friends about gals, whether it's getting to subscribe to you. And we thank you so everyone for doing that. We need to put on around 40 subscribers for zero to get us out to 19.6k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. So much, everyone. Uh, GM, again, looking rather showery and quite cool on Thursday. Then high pressure building at the end of the week and sticking around into the weekend as well. Next week by day 10, which is 6th of March, turning more unsettled again with a return of the zonal flow. And it's still zonal under the high pressure, but uh, I mean unsettled zonal flow. <laughs> and then the ECM uh, rounds it all off with high pressure again dominating through the weekend. I should give both pleasant days. Might be a bit chilly by night, though, with some uh, with, with a little bit of frost and whatnot. Um, up to day 10, well, high pressure still sort of dominating over on the continent, bringing the wind up from that uh, gentle southerly uh, direction. Oh, I forgot to go beyond day 10. Don't mind me rectify that. So, uh, beyond that, well, the high pressure begins to break down and it starts to turn more unsettled uh, with uh, low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. But it takes a while to do so, but eventually we do go into uh, a more unsettled spell into the second week of the month. This is a precipitation forecast based on that TCM run from Tibetia.com. So get rid of uh, last night's rain now, but still leaving showers in its wake. Um, showering conditions into the middle part of the week. Could be some wintry showers in a few places as well on Wednesday. But then we're into that drier trend with high pressure building up towards day 10. Quite a bit of dry weather then to come. These are the octave table in the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to be 6th of March. 21 members of the ECM ensembles with plenty of high pressure to the south and the east. Low pressure is out to the north and the west. And winds are coming in from off the Atlantic a little bit like that. We've got 16 with high pressure over and to the east country. Low pressure out in the Atlantic. That should be mostly dry. Could be a little bit chilly with that. Slight easterly flow. And we've got 14. Clean control the operational run with high pressure in control and then two weeks time these are the options that we've got and it gets us to the 11th of march 23 members of the ecm ensembles looking very unsettled with a strong atlantic flow 14 with high pressure up to a scattered day if your winds could be coming in for a little bit more in an easterly uh, direction that could be a bit chilly and then another 14 Low pressure right over top of country. That looks very unsettled too. So if we do build up this ridge through the first week of March, looks like by the second week of March, we're probably back into unsettled conditions. But that remains to be seen, of course. CFSB2 finally means the 500 millibar high tides breaking down to week periods. The first week period takes from 24 February to the 2nd of March. The next week seeing, well, good with high pressure in control. It looks like CFS has got this right, actually, doesn't it? Based on the short range model output, which definitely overnight has shifted in an anti cyclonic direction. Uh, sometimes CFS, I say, gets things right. We give it a lot of stick, but uh, it looks like CFS could be right on this. Week 2, though, goes unsettled. It's the 3rd to the 9th of March with low pressure then in control from off the Atlantic. That looks quite wet windy. Week 3, uh, 10th to the 16th of March, starts to build up more of a ridge uh, again. So that turns in drier. Should still be mild. And then uh, week 4 is going to be the 17th to 23rd of March. Could this be first hint of a top of spirit response to any SSW? Maybe. Who knows? It's developing a Scandinavian high and looks like it's bringing the wind around to uh, the east. So, remains to be seen, uh, as I say, where that's going, and we'll keep you updated. 
Right, okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for everyone for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to press that guys, well, get to subscribe to show show everyone for doing that. We need to put around 45 subscribers, 40, 45 subscribers, get ourselves to uh, 19.6k. So thanks show show everyone for doing that. Tomorrow we're going to have a 6 UK weather forecast. We'll have the extended European outlook and we'll also have 10 14 day. So uh, come back for more. But this is what that's all for now, and thanks for watching.